This is an educational video of the Beery Buchtenica Developmental Test of Visual Motor Integration, 6th edition, for use in the New York City Department of Education. This video should not be used as a substitute for the Beery Administration Scoring and Teaching Manual. This video will include a description of the Beery VMI, tips to keep in mind for test administration, Administration and scoring of the Beery VMI, the Visual Perceptual Test, as well as the Motor Coordination Test, and raw score interpretation. The Beery VMI is a widely administered pediatric assessment of visual motor integration. This assessment is a screening tool and should be used in conjunction with other pediatric assessments. Educators and therapists use the Beery VMI to gain a better understanding of visual motor deficits that can lead to potential learning and behavioral issues. Results from the Beery VMI are often cited in referrals for children to receive special services. The purpose of this video is to ensure that the full form of the test is administered properly and consistently. Be sure to use a number two pencil without an eraser. Keep the test booklet face down directly in front of the subject. Allow only one try per task with no erasing. Record the results inconspicuously. Individual children at or over functional age 5 and adults. For children under functional age 5, see the manual, pages 22 and 23, for further instruction. Begin at task 7. Point to the task and the blank space below it. Encourage the subject if necessary. Avoid tracing the form with a finger or pencil. Do not let the subject trace the form. Make one like this. Make yours right here. Make one like this. Make yours right here. Keep the paper square in front of the child. Allow only single line strokes, not thickened lines to emulate the lines of the forms. Testing may be ended after three consecutive items for which the child earns no points. However, you may wish to continue because it is often informative to see how a child approaches more difficult items. Record the subject scores on page 23 of the test booklet. Credit all untested points prior to the subject's first success. For example, if the subject succeeded on tasks 7, 8, and 9, and therefore was not tested on tasks 1 through 6, Credit the points for tasks 1 through 6. Allow one point for each imitated or copied item up to three consecutive failures. Subtract one point for each incomplete item up to and including the three consecutive failures. For example, if a child fails items 6, 8, and 11, 12, and 13, the raw score is 8. Record individual form results on the next to last page of the form and overall results on the last page. Be sure to include observations noticed throughout testing. One point is awarded if none of the child's marks on the test form go beyond the edges of the paper. If the child's copied form touches or goes slightly outside the blank box, a score or credit should be given if all other scoring criteria for that form have been met. If the child makes a second attempt at a form, always mark the one she or he did first. Remember that if a child successfully completes tasks 7, 8, and 9, he automatically gets the points for all previous tasks. New scorers should refer to pages 30 through 76 of the manual for sample images when scoring to determine if a point should be given or not. Use a protractor when necessary in order to compare the angles of the subject's drawing to the angles outlined in the scoring criteria of the manual. The if in doubt rule. It is very important to remember when scoring a form that, when in doubt, score it as meeting the criteria. Inexperienced scorers tend to be too strict, which can greatly affect the norms.
Begin with the test and teach procedure for tasks 4 through 6. Place one finger on the heavy black outline of stimulus box 4 and keep it there until it is time for item 5. If the subject responds, make a small mark next to the choice whether it is correct or not, as shown in this image. If the subject does not respond, circle the item number above the stimulus box as shown for item 4. Teach each task whether or not the subject responds correctly for each sample. Do not cover parts of the form to reduce visual distractions because that can invalidate the norms. Starting with item 7, stop teaching the tasks. Begin timing with item 7. The subject will be given 3 minutes to complete the remaining portion of this test. You can allow subjects over 6 to mark their own responses if you think they can handle the task appropriately. Have the subject make a small mark next to any choices as shown on the following page. If the subject wants to change a response, have the subject draw an X through the original choice. See this line? There is one more line that is just the same down below. Let's find it. You point to it. It's not this one, is it? This line is smaller than the one in the box up above. It's this one, isn't it? It's just the same as the one in the box up above. Observe and record any evidence of visual acuity problems such as squinting, positioning the head closer to the paper, eye rubbing, or comments. If you have doubts about the subject's vision, refer the child to the school nurse or otherwise obtain a visual assessment. Conclude testing exactly three minutes after starting task seven. The correct responses for items four through 30 are indicated on page 86 of the manual. Always score the subject's first response if more than one response is given, unless the subject clearly corrected a choice, such as verbalizing, no, not that one, this one. One point is awarded for each correct item up to three consecutive incorrect items or until the three minute time limit expires, whichever comes first. Including the initial three testing teaching items, a maximum of 30 points can be earned. If you have not already noticed the following three motor tasks during the testing session, observe and record them before beginning this motor coordination test. Task one, subject climbs into and sits in a dull chair without help. Task two, subject holds pencil with thumb and fingertips. Task 3. Subject holds paper with one hand and scribbles or draws with the other. Decide if rest and or exercise is needed before proceeding with children younger than 7. You will need a stopwatch or a timepiece with a second hand. Exactly 5 minutes are allowed for this test. Remember to use a sharpened number 2 pencil or a ballpoint pen. Do not allow erasers. Also, keep the paper straight and centered. Begin with imitation tasks four through six. Watch me draw a dark line from the black dot to the gray dot and try to stay inside the road. Now you do it. Draw a dark line from the black dot to the gray dot. Try to stay inside the road. If the subject does not respond, record the non-response by circling or marking the item B item number. Then trace over your line on item A and repeat your instructions for item B. If the subject still does not respond, hold her hand and guide it to make the line on item B. Repeat as needed. If a subject completes a form, such as item 10, without lifting the pencil, you can say after the subject is finished, go ahead and lift your pencil to start new lines, like this. Demonstrate how to draw that form on the blank space outside the roads. Occasionally, a subject will attempt to connect dots outside the lines, such as on item 10. In such cases, demonstrate how to draw the form correctly. For item 17 through 21, if a subject omits a part, such as an arrow tip, coach one time per item by pointing to the small stimulus above the roads and saying, have you done all the parts you see in the little one? Be sure to do all the parts on yours. 
Do not stop after the subject has made three consecutive errors. Continue for exactly five minutes unless the subject is becoming too tired or is clearly unable to score more points. If you stop before five minutes, record exactly how many minutes and seconds have elapsed. If you allow a child to continue beyond five minutes, note the last task completed within the five minutes. The purpose of tasks 7 through 30 is to assess the subject's ability to draw within a targeted area. The subject's only requirement is to draw within the roads. These drawings do not have to meet the Berry VMI criteria on pages 30 through 77. The maximum total score for motor coordination is 30. Score all tasks completed during the 5 minutes along with the first three imitation tasks. Do not stop scoring after three consecutive failures. To get the raw score, add up the number of failed tasks, including any from the imitation section, and subtract that number from the total number of tasks completed within the five minutes. An item is scored one point if the response meets all three of the following criteria. There are pencil marks within all parts of the roads and between all dots. The marks do not have to be complete. No mark clearly goes over a road line. Touching or overlapping a road line is permissible. As with the Beery VMI scoring, there must be at least one overlap on item 27 and one over or underlap on item 30. Pages 180 through 207 of the manual contain charts that convert raw scores to standard scores based on a subject's age. Record the standard scores for each test in the summary box on page 24 of the Beery VMI full form. Under each test column, mark the corresponding standard score with a dot on the line. After making each dot, connect the dots to form a line graph depicting performance on all three tests. Refer to Table 1 on page 94 of the manual for standard score interpretation. For example, the subject's Beery VMI standard score is 85. This can be further interpreted by looking at the standard scores of both visual perception and motor coordination. A low score in either or both of these subtests would indicate where the problem areas lie.